And then, then I ran into a master that just blew my mind. And what he said to me was this, you are not here to find your identity. You are here to create your identity. David is the CEO of Samurai Success and the author of Swords of Illumination. The samurai, when you think of samurai, you think, oh, this, well, at least I did, this beautiful katana sword, right? That everybody goes, oh, it's so inelegant, it's this and there. And then we can go into the Jedi and all these other things, but it's the sword that really we focus on. I will tell you, for the first years of training to become truly a samurai, you weren't able to touch a sword. All you did was work on you because that's the idea, it's not the sword, it's the wielder of the sword. So when you focus on you and you work on you, then you're prepared to take the sword up, take the tool up to deal with the issue or deal with a solution because you're prepared for it. You know, the very first question that kind of came to my mind as I was uh, learning more about what you do, David, and samurai success and the swords of illusion. Uh, I was thinking, how in the world did you come up with like this whole story and these principles around being a being a samurai and how how it relates to your life and what kind of led you down that path? Wow, man. Years ago, um, I was talking to some, some people. I, I grew up in the Florida Keys, and there's the little dots on the end of Florida, right? And so it was a very tourist destination. People were going down there to vacation, let go. and But very rich people were coming down there. Very wealthy people were coming down because that's where you could afford to go and play. And I got a really rare chance in different jobs. Uh, I used to be a mate on a dive boat um, and I got to interview people. I didn't call it interviewing at the time. We were just talking, right? You know, it's, hey, but then I started going, wow, there's a real opportunity here to talk to people and really find out what makes rich people rich, right? And what makes them wealthy? What, what makes this health, wealth, relationship concepts we all talk about really applicable? How does it really work? And so I was fascinated, but, but one of those conversations, I was fascinated with it, that uh, a gentleman said to me, he says, one of the greatest lives you can live is being in service of others. And I don't know why, Nathan, that it just struck me. And I was a kid at the time. I don't know. It just, it hit me so profoundly. And then later on, I read a book that said the word samurai loosely translated means in service of others. And the connection for me was on. It was that that was the, the the moment that it just hit me like lightning, man. And it was just no turning back. And I immediately started doing my research. And of course, you know, growing up in my lifetime was Bruce Lee was so famous at the time and everything else. And martial arts was so big. And I got involved in Aikido very young. And uh, I showed Shotokan Karate when I was really young. And then much later on, after I got into college, I got involved in Aikido, which the art of the samurai. And so that learned so many of the different principles and things that went along with that. But then I realized that after reading the book of Five Rings by Musashi, um, that there were some life principles that I wanted to be able to figure out as well. And that's where the real cognition of the whole book came together is like, what makes this place work? What makes me work in it? How do I get the best and fullest experience of being in service of others? And so in that book, it was my attempt to write down those principles, these 12 swords of illumination that really point out the, the principles that when you reprogram yourself with those ideas and belief systems, it truly changes your experience of the world. Yeah. Hey, I'm all about that as well. Uh, so I think there's a lot of alignment with mm. the the work that I do with the self-assured man and so for for us and myself it's the journey is around specifically disability and you know as i was reading the book one of the things that kept coming up for me was what is this journey of identity all about right and that's like the very early on the sword that they talk about is the sword of identity and you know, I was talking to our mutual friend, Ryan, and, yes. you know, what I what I kept 
coming back to as I was reading was was this thought and this question. And it was when I think about becoming, so becoming something, becoming a person, what it honestly feels like to me at this moment is I'm trying to escape who I actually am. (laughs) And, And so the question, though, that has been coming up for me is like, how do I step into the way of being and still being able to take action? Because I think we have to both be able to just be without doing, but action is required to make certain things uh, come to life. So you got any insights for me there? Wow, so much of this is is about taking a look at this template that we've been given. You know, it seems recent, but it's it's so ancient, Nathan, right? This be, do, have strategy. And I know there's differencing views on the YouTube. I've seen them on, you know, the different social media. But when you really dive into the work, it becomes incredibly magical. And what I mean by that is there's this beingness that they talk about. And we're in this society that really has reversed that where we're going to do something in order to have something in order to be something right i'm going to do work so i can have money so i can be successful and what this template is it reverses it where you're now being something before you go into the doing this and i'll tell you it's a magical experience um, and available to all of us because as you choose who you are before doing something you have a very different experience than when you're just doing something, expecting to be something later on. It's a lot more fulfilling using the be, do, have strategy for me than it was doing the do, have, be strategy. And so that's what this life is about. Because if I'm at my best, Nathan, then I can be my best for you. If I'm not at my best, brother, it's on. You know, I mean, I'm dealing with my issues. You're talking to me. I'm not listening to you. I'm waiting for my time to talk. (laughs) You know how it goes, right? And I don't believe for most of us, that's the experience we're after. What we're really after is that personal connection between you and I. Like right now, nothing is more important in this moment than you and I. And having that connection with people changes everything. And, you know, as I I was hearing you speak there, what was coming up for me is like, so when you first started applying these principles, to your own life Mm. what was that like when you were i'm going to give this this reverse i'm going to step into a way of being before anything else what did that look like for you as you were first starting this journey for yourself well the first thing that happened was there's a lot of pain (laughs) that started me on my journey i was i was just tired of it man i was i was I was noticing that certain things would happen in my life and I would react and respond a certain way that didn't represent who I say I was because there was always a feeling that went around with it. You know, I was angry. I was upset. I was stressed and I was beating myself up and judging myself for responding and reacting in that way. So I was like, what's causing that? What's causing me to do these things? Because I know they're not, it's not really who I am. Well, that started me on this journey of, okay, well then who am I? And I started looking at movies and books and going to seminars and everything, listening to the masters all over the planet as much as I could. And I will tell you, I got a real sense from most of them that um, this identity of who I am was something I was supposed to discover. And then, then I ran into a master that just blew my mind. And what he said to me was this, you are not here to find your identity. You are here to create your identity. And when you start looking, Nathan, I know you know this, it resonates, so you're shaking your head because when you look at successful people on this planet, even when I was down in the Keys, I didn't recognize it at the time, but those people knew one thing. They knew who they were and they couldn't be talked out of it. I don't care what you wanted to tell them, they were on this path. And it was remarkable. Whether they were good people or bad people wasn't the question. The question is the level of congruency that they possessed, knowing who they are and doing the things that associated with that and nothing else. They would never do something that wasn't associated with that identity. 
that's where it led me to this understanding that this identity is the cornerstone of making up this experience in this lifetime. Yeah, man. Yeah. It's, <laughs> this resonates a lot. And um, so other than um, doing my work with the men with disabilities and the self-assured man, I also do a lot of work around loneliness and helping people find connection and like in my experience of doing that, I've come to one belief and it's kind of just what you just talked about. Like, you know, when it comes to that, people are always, well, if I get in this relationship, everything's going to take care of itself. I won't be experiencing this. And, and like my core belief is like loneliness isn't a relationship issue. It's an identity issue. Ooh. Wow, man. Oh, wow. That because, is wow. yeah, I think everything that we come up against as human beings has to do with our identity. So I have a share, like, I'm right on board with you there. And it's like, going back to the book a little bit, another thing that kind of stuck out to me and you can speak into is, is the relationship between the father and the son because like certain things that were sticking out to me were like the son had a specific view <laughs> of his father and then these events started to happen and you see him start to realize oh this is not really what I thought it was, but I believe that as a man and definitely as a man with a disability, uh, the relationship between the identity you have of your father and who he is plays a huge role into like how you start to show up on your journey in the world. Absolutely. There's a great, there's a great quote that speaks as I, I'm forgetting the author right now, but it says when I was 19, it was just remarkable about how little my father knew about life. But by the time I was 21, it was amazing how much he had learned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I really love that quote because it speaks to my life as well. My father and I had a very difficult relationship, me growing up kind of thing. But I will tell you that difficultness, that pressure that wanting to be able to find his love and respect the things that most of us as men deal with um it really molded and shaped me in a positive way because i chose it that way um, it would have been very easy for me to take in the dark side from that same level of pressure but because of my identity that i chose for me wanting to be someone who looked at life in a very different way a positive viewpoint that's that same energy that he was putting to helped me mold me into a very different person than someone else choosing a dark side, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. So a, a lot about having, um, making our own personal choices and, and decisions about this is who I'm choosing to be in the world. Wow. And yes. when I understand what that looks like for me, I can start to make again the congruent decisions uh that align with who that person is i'm curious um in in your own life how does your life kind of mirror the journey of yoshi mm. you know this is the the first book that i've written you know kind of stuff and i, I co-authored it with a friend of mine paul lorette and the idea here is when we started putting this together was I wanted to take something that was real. And the truth is I wrote it for a very selfish reason. Um, I believe that I get to come back here. <laughs> I don't know why I believe that. I just have this sense of knowingness about it. And I wanted something to guide me when I got back here so that I could do some things different because I've learned so much this lifetime that I really wanted to share it, not only with people, but I wanted to reshare it with myself. And so writing this book for myself is what we did. We started off with that. So, so much of the experience that's in that book is part of my life experience used through a metaphor and, you know, other people's perspective. 
But having that knowingness, being able to come back to me through that material was the most important thing. So having that identity and, and the core concepts that go along with that so that I could remember sooner so I could get on my life journey earlier was exactly why I wrote it. I, I love that. And uh, looking back on your journey now, what's what's a message that if if you were to go back to your teenage self, what's a message that you would give him? So the first one would be the first principle, the, the first sword of illumination, which is about identity as the cornerstone for creating all this idea. So along my journey, I found out there is this really interesting word called and. So we live in a world of or, right? This or that. Mm -hmm. Spiritual terms, there's the word called this, which is this and that. So things coexist together. And that principle really that's in the book really speaks to this idea of we both have free will and we have fate and destiny. They're and, they're not or. And so what attracts the destiny is this thing called your identity. So once you set the tone for who you are, it creates a frequency. So you set the tone with who you are, you set your identity, and then you start doing things that are associated and congruent with that. And the more congruent you are with doing the things that are about who you say you are, creates a frequency. And that frequency is what I understand creates destiny. Now, the same pattern happens also. So I'm telling my teenage self, right, that you got to get in this place of congruency, take action, but make sure it's associated with who you say you are. Because the universe doesn't know the difference, because if you say you're one thing and you do a different thing, for example, if I say I'm a world class athlete and I go over and sit on the couch over there and eat cheese <laughs> all day, right, those things yeah. aren't congruent, but they do create a frequency and that frequency creates a destiny. Whether I want that destiny or not, it's being attracted to it. So that's what I'd really focus my teenage self on and going, the things you do matter, things who you say matter, putting those together makes it explosive. Yeah, man. Um, and that makes me think like um, when I talk to people, I think again to that congruency thing, it's like we have this idea that's been like it can be society, it can be our family of origin, and we just carry this idea of who we're supposed to be, and we don't really learn just just out of being in the world. Like we have to actually <laughs> go in and make a choice to <laughs> like examine this up. But it's like the, the thought is, well, this is how things are supposed to be, and it's like, well. Is that really true or who's supposed to be? Are we living here? Mm, right. Yeah. And yeah. yeah, so that that just resonates with me as well. But what what do you do on those days? Um, I don't know if you have them very frequently these days, but when you are starting out and you are just learning about, OK, this is the frequency I want to be at like, what do you do on those days when it's like, <laughs> it takes a dip and you're not at the frequency that you're like, oh, I'm not congruent today. <laughs> I usually like to go into a dark room, pull the covers up over my head kind of stuff and just pass <laughs> out sleep. <laughs> but probably the one of the most important lessons I've learned is when I'm, and when I am in one of those lower frequencies is not to create meaning behind it. It's just a cycle I'm in. It's just part of the universal pendulum, if you will. There's, there's a natural flow to energy. As a matter of fact, in order to feel really good and, and know what that feeling is, there's got to be those bad days because without the bad days, you can't know what it feels to feel really good. You can't have the experience of it. So the most important lesson I've learned from that is when I do go in those dark places, and they do happen, brother, even today, they're just a lot less frequent. Right. Yeah. But when I go into those, the most important thing is when I go into them, I recognize them, I'm aware of it. And I do not make a meaning out of that. 
like start asking questions. Like I'm in this dark space and I start asking questions like, why is this happening to me? Why am this? Why I'm such a good person. And, and I start doing this dance, right? Which goes into this whole wheel of doom. And, and, and it just, and all of a sudden it, it starts multiplying. And so in order to get out of that dark place, the thing that I do is I start being very quiet, stop giving meaning to things. I stop questioning stuff. One of the most powerful things I ever learned about questions is that the power, the wisdom of understanding questions is knowing when to stop asking questions. Wow. And I will tell you, during that time, when I get into those frequencies, I just let my, my, my brain go blank. I just meditate. And I know there's this chatter stuff that happens, right? But with the work that I've done over this past 25 years, I've actually found a way to reprogram my subconscious brain so that that chatter doesn't happen, so that judgment doesn't happen. And when it does happen, I'm able to quiet it because I'm using it. It's not using me. Yeah. When's the... All right, can you share a time when that principle about asking questions like when you when you realize hey it's time to stop asking and when's the last time that happened for you and and what is that like so last time that really happened was well it, it happens i'm given opportunities to test my theory a lot <laughs> how's that yeah and so it's just been so much practice of that. It's just my natural behavior toward it now, right? Just strategy that says, okay, I'm feeling this way. I'm noticing this thing. And I definitely recognize that my feelings aren't the truth of things. And that's another amazing principle that we talk about. And that is that I was definitely under the illusion that my feelings were telling me the truth of something. They weren't telling me the truth, Nathan. They were telling me a truth. Mm -hmm. And so imagine now when you have a feeling about something, whether it's positive or negative, it's simply an alarm clock. It's simply yeah. awakening you to saying, hey, pay attention to me because something is not congruent right now, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If I'm having a bad day, I'm having a bad feeling, something's out of alignment and I don't need to question it. I just need to observe it and yeah. observation allows me to stay disassociated, if you will, from that, but still aware of it and then deal with the process of just let it. And, and by the way, if I just shut up and get the hell out of my own way, Nathan, <laughs> it solves itself because, you know, I'm a naturally happy person because I've reprogrammed my brain to be able to be this happy person I want to be because I want to be in service of others. So I've got to work on my stuff. And that's probably the life lesson I've really got to. So not the moment that it happens, but what I do to prepare for that moment before it happens. And what mm -hmm. I do is I work on me. I work on my issues. So whenever I have a bad dream or something else like this, a very specific process that we teach here at Samurai Success about how to deal with those issues. So I'm constantly preparing like the samurai. So the samurai, when you think of samurai, you think, oh, this, well, at least I did, this beautiful katana sword, right? That everybody goes, oh, it's so inelegant, it's this and there. And then we can go into the Jedi and all these other things. But it's the sword that really we focus on. I will tell you, for the first years of training to become truly a samurai, you weren't able to touch a sword. All you did was work on you. Because that's the idea. It's not the sword. It's the wielder of the sword. Yeah. So when you focus on you and you work on you, then you're prepared to take the sword up, take the tool up to deal with the issue or deal with a solution because you're prepared for it. You know, it's it's so interesting that this has come up because as you were speaking, what, <laughs> just talking about the katana, what it made me think of is uh, the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and they all were given their weapons for mm -hmm. very specific reasons. And that's mm -hmm. exactly when they talk about the katana, they're like, that's exactly why Leonardo got that weapon because Master Splinter knew that he had the ability to wield mm -hmm. the sword in the appropriate way. And, nice. um, 
And it also made me go go back to the the book too. And when he's he's like coming and he's like, Well, I walked away from that one situation. How have I not passed on to the next <laughs> test of the next sword? <laughs> yes. And it's like, okay, do it doing one thing one time. We have to be able to do it. And as you said, continue to practice it, to, to master it. Nice. Um, it can't be done in one time and then we're a master. Um, and so when, when you're taking people through your, your process in, in the coaching, um, what are, what are the abilities and, and the awareness level of the people who are are walking in your door. What are you looking for in a an ideal person to come work with you? Let's go back to this idea of duplication, and then we'll talk about that. Okay. This idea so funny because Samurai Success is the name of our company, right? And Samurai means loosely translated in service, so in service of other success. So I get the question all the time. Well, Dave, please, you know define success for me. And I was like, oh, geez, <laughs> here we go. Buckle up. Right. So as I really put my brain to it and then really was like, you know, let me put my mind to it and let me put my body to it. Cause it took all those integration of that thing to get to this idea that success is so different for everybody, but there's a singular theme that must exist with success. Okay. And that is this, it must be able to be duplicated. Success one time is called luck. It's not even called success anymore, right? Just luck. Success mm -hmm. twice, three times. If you can duplicate something, you then have success. And it doesn't matter how you define success after that, as long as it's duplicatable. So that's the kind of clientele we're looking for. We're looking for people that are not after money. They're after mastery. Mm. Mastery of themselves, mastery in their business, mastery in life. So that's a huge calling, but I know you're out there. <laughs> I know I'm not alone in this because I'm well, I'm talking to you and I know that your mastery, I can feel your mastery, what, what you do about how dedicated you are to being in the service of this community you've, you've attracted. And that mastery exists on this planet, man. We just, we don't have a place to go and study together. I want to create that. So we did. Yeah. All right. So I, I I've got a, a couple more questions and just based on what you said there, what does community look like for you? So if I'm really going to talk about, and you and I are going to talk about who we really are, who we really are, then we have to understand that, that our soul is divinity, right? And we are connected to source. Once we go past that, everything is a belief about who we are. That's it. And we can believe anything we want because that's the free will aspect of this physical plane, right? But we are divinity. So when you talk about community, we've lost that space. We've forgotten that part of ourselves. And if you really want to change the world, because a lot of people say they do, um, then we're going to have to start there. We're going to have to find people who have integrated soul and ego and mind and body and we've got to put them in leadership positions but we've got to start here because in order to attract that person and create a frequency that we can attract them right yeah. we've got to become them so this community starts right here and the masters have said this for centuries if you really want to change something start here <laughs> so yeah. the definition of community really is the individual then fully expressed and as long as I show up to meet you, Nathan, and I'm full, I don't need anything from this conversation. I don't need anything from you. Then yeah. we can have a really connected conversation. Let's help other people become full, right? I don't mean full, uh, full of that other stuff that most people are talking <laughs> about. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? I mean, full of soul and spirit and energy and frequency and goodness. And you know, those things are possible. We've just forgotten them. Oh, man. Yeah. Helping other people become full. Yes. And, yeah. I I love that. Um I'm curious in in your interviews and in your conversations, 
is there something that you uh, either a question or an idea that you would really love to talk about that nobody really ever asked you about? Well, that's one of the great things that Ryan told me about you is that you ask these spectacular questions or and there it is. <laughs> so probably the source of all that material that I wanted to ask questions about is in the book. So asking those questions has been my, for 35 years, man, I've just been haunted by finding out how this place works, how I work in it and how it connects to this spiritual thing, right? How does it all work together? And believe me, I've, I've only touched on the surface of it in my lifetime, but the things I've learned has helped me have experiences that probably are worth 10 or 15 lifetimes already kind of stuff. So I'm very thankful for that. Going back to a core principle, though, we've already talked about it today. Truly understanding who you are and understanding they're not here to discover it, but you're here to create it is probably the, the, the cornerstone of my understanding of this physical plane and my existence in it. So many folks I talk to in all these different programs, they start off with conversations with me. You know, Dave, we really want to change the world. We really want to talk about this. How should I be a man? How should I be a woman? How? Listen, all those things are available to you. But the key concept is, is there is a master inside of you. What we have to do is get to that master because that master knows the answers to all the questions you seek. You do not need to seek that from somebody else. And when you finally get to that space of being quiet and masterful, all the answers you really want to know about this place will come through you, not from you. That's just from your ego. You have connection to source, man, that we've forgotten. And when you remember that and that master comes alive inside of you, you're going to have all the answers that you want in this lifetime. Yeah. Mm. Just go ahead and pause it right there and rewind it for when you watch <laughs> it back. Cause you're probably going to want to watch that multiple times people. Um, you know, so let's, let's go with if someone is interested in, working with you and i'll make sure all that info is in the notes and all that but where can they connect with you so on instagram and my my team has been specific so i want to read this to you but um the best way to reach us is at instagram at samurai underscore success and in that is we're sharing a lot of extra video and content with people just to get some real flavor for what we do kind of stuff. Um, and whether you're interested in coming and working with us or anything else, you make that decision. Listen to that master inside of you kind of stuff. Just know we're available. Awesome. So we'll we'll get people headed over there to check it out. And I, just, I want to end with, with this question. And I want you to think about, so I heard you say you have this, this deep knowing that you're going to be coming back around. Mm. Uh, you're going to be back here. So <laughs> here, here's how I want to end, end the conversation. I want you to use this time right here as if you are leaving a voicemail for yourself. So that when you come back, you can you can have this message to take with you as you move <laughs> forward in this new uh, new time around. <laughs> All right, mister, it's time to wake up. <laughs> Stop messing around. Go grab the Swords of Illumination because you've written a love letter to yourself about how this place works. Pick up the book. Do the work. Don't just read it. Reading it is like this belief that knowledge is power. That is not how this place works. We're all so busy getting this knowledge. We've got to go and apply that knowledge because what this place is really about is the experience of that knowledge. And so many of the questions that you want so deeply as a true seeker, Nathan, and you, David, believe myself a voicemail, that you really want to seek, David, is in those answers or in the experiences things. you got to go do the work. You can be all you want. You can sit around and, and meditate all you want, but people are going to show up and take your furniture if you just meditate all day long. 
So you got to go do the work, take the action. And in the action is the experience. And in that experience is where the answers lie that you're so desperate to find. Go do the work. Beep. <laughs> man. man i hope i put that on my own message because if i left it for somebody else i'll miss out <laughs> <laughs> yeah well david i've enjoyed this conversation a lot um, i know that anybody who comes across it is going to gain exactly what they need and let me tell you i I've, I've felt connected throughout the whole uh, conversation. As you said, I can feel the frequency of the connection for sure. Um, is there anything that that you want to leave a, a lasting thought um, before we close it out? I felt the connection with you too as well, brother. And I will tell you that you are Samurai and it's an honor to meet you truly dedicated your life of being in service to others. And I know you're doing the work, man. So that's the frequency I feel. Because when a samurai meets another samurai, you feel it. You just know that feeling of things. When you meet a warrior, you know the feeling. And I know that you're both of those things. So thank you for everything you're doing. Appreciate you.